So today we're going to do shared realities or sync realities. And so this is when you line up two different reference frames on with different augmented reality scenes so that they are aligned so that an object in one augmented reality scene will be the same on another phone. So you can kind of be able to compare and contrast and the two phones will have the same shared reality. And so previously we had done this by syncing up two different scenes by having the scenes initialized at the same points. So that's what we did with the pendulum project. But today I wanted to do it in a different way. So I wanted to use the image tracking in order to jump from one reference frame to another. So when you initialize two phones, they will start with different reference frames. But if you have an image showing on one of the phones, you can actually use that orientation and position to jump between the two reference frames. So basically, we're using image tracking as a gateway to get to another reference frame that we can then have this kind of synced reality with. And so and so the math is actually pretty straightforward. Basically, what we're doing is is we are finding the transformation to the phone. So we get the position quaternion for the phone. And then on the other side where we have the image tracking, we get the quaternion and position. And then we just have to move the entire scene in our second phone so that it has that same transformation and then inverse transformation. So basically you're moving it to that position, the position of the image, and then you're kind of counter moving it backwards out of the position. And that'll get you to be, that'll get you to the same reference frame. And so really it's just some vector subtraction, vector subtraction and some quaternion multiplication. And once we get through that, it's the math is initially seems very challenging, but it's actually not so bad. One of the really big hangups that I had in this project is I kind of assumed initially that the camera orientation and the orientation that I got from the image tracking was actually the same. And this caused me a lot of kind of issues in terms of the math just like was not working out for the longest time. So the realization that I made is that you actually the kind of x, y and z coordinates are not the same for the image tracking as they are for when the camera so you actually need to do an extra rotation and the extra rotation is a 270 degree rotation on the x axis. That's just something that I had to figure out through kind of looking at a bunch of graphs and or looking at a bunch of different axes and kind of figuring out what was going wrong. But yeah, that's the short of it. And it caused me a lot of time waste. And you can also anchor these in place with just a single image tracking thing, which probably will be would be better if you're making some sort of multiplayer game, because then both players are kind of equally advantaged. It's a little bit interesting that the lighting is so different. So if you look at the actual code, all the lighting is attached to the scene. So because they're children elements, you'd expect them to move along as well. But that doesn't seem to be the case. So I have to look a little bit into how directional lighting works. It, I thought it would be the same, but it looks like the directional lighting doesn't carry over. So there might you might need to do some extra calculations for that. So, so shared reality is really exciting because like when you think about AR, a lot of it's to me about kind of being able to share your imagination. And if you are just using it, like if, if you're doing it all on your own, then it just feels like there's no, like other people aren't seeing the same thing you're seeing. So it can be a little bit dissociative in that fashion. But if you start being able to share it with other people, then you can kind of look at the same thing and you feel like you're actually sharing imagination, which I think is a really neat thing to start. This is just boxes. So like... It's not exciting imagination, but we're, we'll get to some more advanced stuff pretty quickly um, I in future videos. But um, I think it's just a really neat first step for that. So this project also uses Django channels for the web sockets, and that allows you to get real time information between the two phones. And it's also what we use to get the extra piece of information of where the phone is for the actual uh, when we're taking the image tracking as well. So. So when you're doing some sort of synced reality or shared reality, you need some way of deciding who has kind of the, the right reality, like who is the ultimate authority. And so sometimes it's good to just kind of delegate that in a very straightforward way. So we just have a leader app and then we have a follower app and the, we can use one leader app and there should we should be able to use as many follower apps as we want. And the leader will have the kind of ground truth and every other of the followers are just trying to mirror that. So they are trying to get to the leader reference frame. This gives us the advantage of only needing each follower to find it its own transformation to that reference frame. So it kind of makes it a lot simpler in some ways. And then if there is any sort of problem, we still have one foundational truth. So it's much easier to kind of like a lot of times in AR, there will be seen drift. So um, things will move away from separate things. And it's very nice to be able to have some sort of identifiable. This is the true scene, but this is the authoritative scene. So onto the coding. The first part that we're going to work on is the WebSocket component. 
component. So that is going to be, we're going to be using the term channels a lot. And what we have to do is we have to set up a QR code that is associated with whatever we made the name of the channel to be. So that will be um, some sort of string, and then that'll be turned into a QR code. Next thing we have to do is we have to set up the WebSocket. So we're going to be using the reconnecting WebSocket again. And once we have that set up, we have our message receiver. And so our message receiver is going to parse the data, and then it's going to split it into two different components. So for the first one on connection, we will get our list of connections, and we will set up all the meshes associated with that. So we're basically splitting this into two. We're going to have a connection type, and then we're also going to have some sort of updating message. This first message will only be sent on the first connect. So that means that we get kind of this is our initialization of the WebSocket. Otherwise, we are just updating a particular mesh. So we just have to find out the index, the position and the quaternion. So the index is going to be we're just basically going to have a list of our meshes and then we'll update it by using that index. And that's basically it for the receiving part of the WebSocket. Now we have to build out the sending part. For the part that is sending to the WebSocket, we have to have our image tracking. So that's the stuff that we've worked on previously. One of the differences here is that we really only want to have tracked results. We don't want to have emulated results. So we're going to wrap our entire function around the tracked state. Then we have to grab out the poses from that, and we will turn those into vectors and quaternions. And now we're on to the step where we were talking about the math previously. We need the orientation from the first camera, so the leader camera. And the leader camera is always going to be indexed to zero. So now we have our first position and our second position and our first quaternion and our second quaternion. And now we can basically just do the math. So the math is basically going to be some, it's going to be applying our first quaternion and then inverting our second quaternion and multiplying that. And then for the position, we are going to have our first position. We're going to subtract off the second position with the quaternion applied to it. And then we're going to set our flags so that we aren't capturing the state multiple times. Then we just send our current position and quaternion to the WebSocket. And with the, with the follower, we have to apply our position and quaternion so that we, because those are in our, the follower's initial reference frame and not in the reference frame of the leader. So we have to do that application. Then finally, we have to, for the, the leader, we actually don't need any of this image tracking. So that's going to be a much simpler script where we can kind of just remove this huge chunk of code. And then we can also remove the transformations because it no longer needs those transformations because it is the reference frame. So now onto the web sockets. So we're going to be using a dictionary on the view scope for our memory management, but that's just, this isn't a good strategy. So maybe try and think of some other way of doing this. But anyways, we're going to start with a very normal attaching our web socket to a channel. And then we will do some sort of indexing where the first person into the room gets an index of zero. And then after that, you just increment up. This is also going to be where our send for the connect is located. So this is a different, this is not sending to all the web sockets. It's only sending to the web socket that got connected. Then we have to set up a disconnect and that basically just has us removed from the channel. And then it also does the thing where we remove the index from the team count. And then we just implement the receive and send. And those are both very straightforward. You really should be using beautiful soup or some sort of method for getting rid of any sort of cross-site scripting attacks because this is still, this is still susceptible to that. So that's just something to pay attention to. Thank you and have a good day.